Now we have other news coming out of the Supreme Court. And that news is, of course, what I'm talking about is that juicy, juicy lobbying that everybody says doesn't happen at the Supreme Court, but it is an open secret that it actually is. So in a bombshell report came out today from ProPublica, we learned that Justice Clarence Thomas and his wife, conservative activist Ginny Thomas, has gone on several luxury trips involving travel subsidized by a GOP mega donor, as well as stays at properties the donor owns. The hospitality was not disclosed on Thomas's public financial filings with the Supreme Court, ProPublica covered. The report of the connection between Thomas and conservative businessman Harlan Crow is already adding to calls that Congress investigate potential ethical lapses. Key Senate Democrats were previously mulling using this year's funding legislation for the Supreme Court to pressure the justices to adopt some sort of ethics code, which is something that it, this should just be illegal. <laughs> like... How is this not illegal? How is it not illegal for the Supreme Court justices to essentially take bribes? Like, oh, they're just getting... No, this is lobbying. This is lobbying. Stop. <sighs> Freaking ridiculous. <laughs> and then it's not just Thomas. There's been uh, gifts and awards given to Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Roberts. I'm sure that, uh, you know, I don't have any knowledge, but I'm sure it's happened to con uh, liberal justices as well in the past. I wouldn't be surprised if Amy Coney Barrett has something along this as well. I can say for certain that this has happened to Alito, Thomas, and Scalia previously, the late Scalia, because we've had direct reporting on this going back years that this is happening. And none of this should be legal. Full stop. This should all be illegal. It should be seen as bribery because it is very closely and more than likely is. Or rewarding for like, hey, you ruled the way I wanted you to do. Here's some, here's some kickbacks. Or like... Hey, man, you know, that case that you're hearing about uh, coming up about some issue facing business. I don't think it should be done that way. Why don't you come to my abode and uh, hear me out? Like, that's what's going on here. We know it's what's going on. And it shouldn't be. Continuing on. The new ProPublica report describes Thomas accepting travel hospitality from Crow that included lavish trips to Indonesia, New Zealand, California, Texas, and Georgia. ProPublica has also identified what appeared to be several trips taken by Thomas on Crow's private jet that went undisclosed on his public ethics filing through one, though one Thomas trip on Crow's jet was disclosed in 1997. I'm going to say that again. 1997. Holy crap. Holy crap. How, how is it? How? All right. All right. I guess this is just what we do now. We just lobby Supreme Court. We, now, what am I talking about? This is what we've been doing for at least 30 years. Lobbying Supreme Court justices. Unelected. Lifelong tenure. Super powerful. Make laws. Interpret laws. Supreme Court justices just getting all the money and perks for sitting in the high court. Jesus Christ. Now, Thomas, now Thomas nominated by former President George H.W. Bush in 1991, is the senior most justice on the court and an intellectual leader of the current 6-3 conservative majority. The justice has also been the subject of scrutiny for his political activities, or the political activities, rather, of his wife, including for texts she exchanged with key players in the former President Donald Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 presidential election. This is not just January 6th that we're mentioning here. This is about the, uh, the slate of secondary electors and all this lawsuits and everything else. Bro 
a Dallas businessman, because of course he's from fucking Texas, with deep connections to Republican politics, because again, Texas, has contributed more than $10 million in publicly disclosed political contributions. Publicly disclosed. You know what? I'm going to go later on. There's a website that a, a great data analyst from Texas, uh, an accountant put together that shows all the money that flows through Texas politics. And I bet if I look this guy up, he's involved in all the Texas money as well. Jeez. Additionally, ProPublica has reported that documents paint a picture that hangs at the crow's Aaron Dax property depicting Thomas Crow and other influential figures in Republican politics, including uh, Leonard Leo, the former Federalist Society head who played a critical role in Trump's makeover of the federal bench. The report revealed that executives of major corporations, as well as heads of prominent conservative organizations, have been in attendance on trips with Crow that Thomas has also joined. This is a giant lobbying effort. Giant. Thomas did disclose in his filing in 2001 a $19,000 Bible that belonged to Frederick Douglass that was gifted to him by the Crow family. Yeah, that's a nice little gesture. That's cool. That's cool. Just $19,000 historical document that one of a kind can't prove anything. My God. Jeez. <laughs> okay. $19,000 one of a kind Bible. All right. Cool. Cool story. Additionally, ProPublica describes a portrait of the justice and his wife given to him by Crow, as well as donations by Crow's foundation of $105,000 for a Justice Thomas Portrait Fund at Yale Law School, where Thomas is an alumnus. Oh, you're going to have $105,000 spent on portraits to this man. Okay, I, you know what? When, when all you have is legacy and ego... All you have is legacy and ego. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and yes, we do appreciate the follow, Provo Kid. Appreciate it. Crow, though, in a statement to ProPublica, acknowledged that he has made, quote, contributions to projects celebrating the life and legacy of Justice Thomas, just as we have done with other great leaders and historically significant figures. I just, I'm not trying to bribe the man. I'm trying to honor him. He's such a great man. Sure, buddy. We believe you. He said that neither Thomas nor his wife asked for the contributions. Well, duh, if they openly asked for it, then that would be soliciting a bribe, and that is actually illegal. But, you know, taking gifts at the Supreme Court, eh, that's not illegal, I guess. I don't know. So this report comes not long after the federal judiciary's policymaking body quietly adjusted its interpretation of what justices are required to disclose as part of their transparency obligation. <sighs> okay. There shouldn't be any questions about what should and shouldn't be considered a ethics violation. These things should be written into the law. And it should be not interpretable by the Supreme Court if, if that law is or is not legal, to be honest with you, because it personally affects them. We need to have a standard for elected and unelected officials that is consistent and helps prevent bribery and other uncouth actions. We want a, a system set up that actually engenders trust into our polity into our politics and anything that is contrary to ensuring that trust is maintained is against the public's interest that is why these kind of things should just be illegal the first amendment doesn't protect you from unethical or doesn't protect you from being held accountable for unethical actions <sighs> 